Hello, yeah, in this video, I will show you how to perform a multiple logistic regression analysis using R. So basically, you're going to learn um, these uh, things. Um, first, fitting a multiple logistic regression model with both uh, categorical and continuous independent variables. Uh, perform a likelihood ratio test for all the effects. Compute the confidence intervals for the regression coefficients. Compute odds ratios, then there are 95% confidence intervals from regression coefficients. Testing an effect using the likelihood ratio test. Compute the pseudo R squares for logistic regression. Perform the Hosmo Lemoshow goodness fit test. Uh, checking a potential confounder and testing an interaction. Computing the ROC curve, including the area under ROC curve. So first, let's read in the data set, take a quick look. Uh, you can see it has um, multiple variables. Uh, looks like only patients is a continuous variable, and all the other variables are categorical. Uh, and also, cancer is the dependent variable. Um, and heavy is the heavy drinking, so it's highly correlated with uh, alcohol use, uh, which is uh, at the level of alcohol use. So. We're going to use alcohol, but we're going to uh, we're going to exclude heavy here. Okay. So um, the syntax for fitting the multiple logic regression model in R is very similar uh, to the syntax of fitting a simple linear logic regression. So using GLM, then you got the model statement, uh, data equal to data, family equal to binomial. And you can see in the model statement, uh, we use the command factor for all the categorical independent variables. So uh, logistic regression is flexible because it accommodates uh, both categorical and in uh, continuous independent variables. Okay, so here, model fit and summary. Uh, you can see in the coefficient uh, table, there are p-values for uh, each categories of the categorical variables, but these p-values are from uh, pairwise comparisons uh, between that category to the reference category. So they're not useful for testing if that variable has an overall effect on the dependent variable. So we can perform a type 3 analysis uh, based on like the ratio test uh, to test the overall uh, effect. Um, so we can use ANOVA and put a model and test equal to chi-square. So you can see um, age, alcohol, tobacco are not significant. Uh, only patient uh, is significant. Uh, I want to point out uh, in the ANOVA function, test equal uh, has uh, several options you can choose. Uh, there's another option called LRT, so like the ratio test, uh, but it just gave exactly the same result as test equal to chi-square. Okay. All right, uh, next task is to compute uh, confidence intervals for regression coefficient uh, because uh, confidence intervals are preferred way to present results, statistical analysis results nowadays. So we can use the function CONFINT to calculate the confidence intervals and print them out. Um, and you can even specify the level of confidence. For example, here, if we want a 90% confidence interval, we can use this command, but say level equal to 0.9, and you can calculate the um, confidence interval here. Uh, and we know an advantage of logistic regression model is that we can compute odds ratios very easily from the regression coefficient. So here we calculate the coefficient, exponentiate them to get the odds ratios, extract the standard errors, calculate the lower and upper limit, and then put them into a data frame. So here's odds ratios and their confidence interval limits. Okay, so next we're going to learn how to test an effect in the multiple logistic regression model. So we can use the likelihood ratio test. Um, the likelihood ratio test requires a pair of nested models. So we're gonna here we're gonna test the effect of patients. So first we fit a smaller model. So model one is the 
cancer regrets on age, alcohol, and uh, tobacco, but not patient. We can give that. And next, we get a bigger model. So this has age, alcohol, tobacco, and the patient. In it. So we get that. Then we can use the ANOVA function to perform a likely ratio test. And this is the results uh, of the likely ratio test. We can see patients are highly significant. Uh, and then uh, in logistic regression, uh, there are several R squared uh, developed. Um, they're not as uh, meaningful and interpretable as the R squared in multiple linear regression, um, but uh, they give up some indication about the goodness of that. Uh, so here we're uh, going to learn a few different ways to calculate uh, the pseudo R squares. Okay, so predicted the probability, and then we can Calculate the McFadden's pseudo R square by getting the null divide deviance, residual deviance, then the McFadden's pseudo R square, and bring it out. So it's about 19%. And there's another R square called the Nagio Kirky R square. Um, we can use a package called the FMSB to load it up and just use the command, then the function Nagio Kirky R2 give you uh, that R squared. So this one is like 31%. Okay. Uh, and uh, another cool package is called the DSC tools. Uh, so we load it up. It has a, a function called the pseudo R square R2. Uh, basically it captured all of our pseudo R squares. You can say uh, pseudo R square model which you go so it give you all the R squares. And next, uh, we're going to perform the Holzman Lima Show Goodness of Fit test. So, this is a more appropriate tool for assessing model fit. We can use the resource selection library and use the function uh, HOSLEM.test. And then here, bring it out. And the p value is uh, 0 0.138, so indicating a satisfactory model fit. And then we want to check potential confounding effect of age on patient. Okay, so for doing that, we can um, first fit a model with age in it. Um, so that's the model we fit previously. So we just grab the coefficient uh, for patient in that um, in that model. And then we can fit another model without age. So here, the model two is uh, you have alcohol, tobacco patient, but no age. So I'm ready to grab the beta coefficient for patient in that model. And then the absolute value of relative change is computed by using uh, absolute value of B1 minus B2 divided by the value of B1. So here it's uh, 31%. So indicate it's greater than 15%. So age is a potential confounder here. So another uh, task we're going to learn is how to test the interactions. Um, in epidemiology, it's also called uh, effect modification. So uh, here, let's just, just give it a try. Say we want to test if there's uh, an interaction between tobacco and alcohol. So it's very easy, just uh, add uh, factor alcohol times factor tobacco into a model statement. Uh, and also here I want to show you, you can use uh, the command update. So you don't have to retype uh, all the syntaxes for fitting the original model. Just update that model, but now you have a new formula for the model. Uh, so model three, and then you can print them out. Uh, and then you can, um, again, do uh, like the ratio test. You can see the interaction term uh, it has a p-value of 0 0.69. So there's no interaction between the two. OK, the last task is for plotting the uh, uh, ROC curve for the fitted logistic regression model. Um, we can use the library called the ROCR and library metric. Uh, so first we calculate the predicted values and then um, using the prediction function in the ROCR package to generate the optical pre 
correct, uh, and then use the performance function to um, calculate um, another object with perf um, using pred. A measure equal to tpr x dot measure equal to fpr. And then we can just plot the ROC curve. Okay. And the area ROC curve can be calculated by using AUC function. So this one is uh, 0 0.76, uh, which is a pretty good uh, area ROC curve. All right. Uh, thanks for watching.